Hey, what's going on? Tim with Perkins Roofing here, and today we're gonna to talk about the different types and shapes of roof decks and their pros and cons. The most common type of roof deck that you'll find is a wood deck. It's primarily found in residential homes. So single family homes, townhouses, things like that will have a wood deck more often than not. Uh, the next most common after a wood deck is a concrete deck. You'll find a concrete deck in a lot of commercial buildings, in condominiums, sometimes in warehouses. After concrete, the third most common is metal, which metal is usually found in large warehouses. It can sometimes be found for like outside porch structures in residential homes and for like uh, superstructures of condominiums. You will find other types of decks on roofs, but they're not as common, like a gypsum deck or a tectum, which is very rare. You'll find them for like schools and for, for special types of buildings, government buildings, stuff like that. But the most common that you'll see are wood, concrete, and metal. And most of the time, wood you'll find in residentials. Sometimes you'll have concrete residentials if you have like uh, big modern style uh, homes. And concrete is generally found in commercial or condominium style buildings. So in regards to the main three decks, we're going to talk about wood, concrete, and metal. Uh, they do have different pros and cons. Like the pro about wood for, is that it's cheaper to install a wood deck than it is a concrete deck. But then the con of wood is that it's more likely to get damaged. Like wood will get warped, especially if you don't, if it's a new construction and you don't roof over it fast, wood will get warped. So wood can get warped, wood can get damaged. And right now, especially wood is pretty expensive. It's not as expensive as concrete, um, but if you have a concrete deck, it's less likely to get damaged. Now you can get cracks in concrete decks, but you can pretty you can fix them pretty easy as long as you have access to the crack. So that means you have to open up the roof where the crack is and find it. So they're harder to find a, a leak in a concrete deck, whereas a wood deck you can get in an attic and you can find the leak pretty quick. A uh, concrete deck is not as easy to find the leak, but it's less likely to leak and um, it's more stable of the structure. So concrete is a little more expensive, less likely to leak. Usually concrete, if it leaks, uh, you can't, it'll be hard to find the leak because what happens is the water is gonna leak from the joint at the wall where the concrete slab of the roof runs into the concrete slab of the wall. There's a, an opening, like a joint. And usually water will come through there. So you think, oh, it's a perimeter leak, but it might be up higher in the field. And um, the same thing can happen with expansion joints on a concrete deck where water will drip down in an expansion joint. Now metal is pretty similar to wood, whereas it's pretty easy to find the leaks. You'll see rusted out panels or whatever if you have like a corrugated metal deck. So metal and wood are pretty similar as far as um, finding leaks. And the, the main thing though is metal is going to last longer. Um, if you have salt water, maybe it won't if it's steel. But if you have uh, some special panels, aluminum, non-corrosive, um, stainless steel panels, something like that, it won't rust and it may last, or it won't rust as quickly and it may last longer than wood um, in environments like that. So there are some of your pros and cons is that the wood is the cheapest, uh, metal um, is good, but you don't want to be using metal in salt water, and concrete is the best more often than not, but it's harder to find issues with it. So now we'll get into the shapes of decks a little bit um, because they all also have their own pros and cons. And a roof deck is not a 2D shape, even though most of the times you're thinking of uh, seeing construction on blueprints or plans or whatever. Um, roof decks are 3D shapes. So what I mean by that is that it's not just the shape from an overhead that's going to tell you whether it's a good or bad roof. Uh, you need to know the depth of the roof. So when I talk about depth of a roof, I'm talking about is it sloped or not. A sloped roof is going to be way better of a roof than a flat roof in almost every instance because the goal of a roof is to shed water away from the structure of the building. So if you have a sloped roof, it is going to naturally shed the water off of the building. Now many flat roofs have parapet walls. That uh, parapet wall is a wall that's like on the perimeter of the roof um, that's going to block the water from shedding directly off the roof. Now, uh, in my experience, roofs with parapet walls uh, don't last as long as a sloped roof or even a flat roof that doesn't have parapet walls 
but his maybe like a quarter inch or an eighth inch slope and the water's going to run off of an eave. So anytime you can get that water off the roof, the roof is going to last longer. You don't want ponding water on a roof. So whenever you have ponding water, what I mean by ponding water is like a bird bath or it looks like a little pool or that's what they call a pond, a pond on top of a roof. That water sitting on top of the roof is going to eat through the existing roof system. You do not want that. You want the water to be removed from the roof. On top of that, ponding water roof is also going to cause mosquito issues, especially here in South Florida. So that's just like a side benefit of not having a flat roof that holds ponding water on top of it. Um, now, slope roofs are going to be better. Obviously, the more slope, the better as far as shedding water. And sometimes if you have more of a slope, the roof will last longer. But other times when you talk about more slope, you're also talking about adding wind pressure onto that roof. So being here in South Florida with hurricanes, you can think if you're looking at a roof from the street view, if you have a four on 12, which is four inch on 12 inch for every foot of slope, a four on 12 roof is gonna be sticking up a little bit. That's kind of like a standard slope roof. So that wind is gonna be hitting that structure. Whereas if you have a flat roof, less wind is gonna be hitting the roof. So it's less likely that you're gonna have wind damage on your roof. If you have an eight on 12, Maybe the rain is going to drain off of the roof faster because you're going to have more of a slope so the water's going to run right off of it. So it's going to help preserve the underlayment and your tile, shingle, metal, whatever you have on top of it. But you may incur more wind damage because if you have 8 on 12, that means your house, your roof is sticking up higher up into the air, which means that it is a larger profile for trees and all kinds of crap that's blowing in the wind to hit the roof. So that's what I mean by uh, there's pros and cons. It's not just, okay, all pros. Otherwise, everybody would do the same thing for every single roof. If 8 on 12 had no issues and the rain drained, drained off the roof perfectly and there's no other risks, then everyone would have an 8 on 12 roof. But that's not the case. You have wind damage hitting that 8 on 12 roof. Also, with super sloped roofs like that, like 8 on 12, you're, you're going to more than likely have a higher cost of an install, whereas like a 4 on 12, 3 on 12, something that's walkable, you're not going to have uh, a high install cost. You're going to be standard install cost. But going 8 on 12, something like that, you may have to have uh, little pieces of wood that you'll install into the roof for foot pedestals as you're installing, or you will have to install from a high reach, something like that. Um, now, the last thing I want to talk about besides slope versus flat and shedding water versus wind pressures is cuts of the roof. And what I mean by cuts is the less complicated the roof, the better. If it's more complicated, then that means with more valleys and um, it has more cuts in the roof, different features, zigzagging all over the place, it's going to likely have issues in the future. Maybe not when it's first installed, but maybe 15, 20 years down the road. Those cuts are the primary sources of leaks in the future. If you have a standard square rectangular shaped roof with very few cuts in it, you're less likely going to have issues in the future because there are less trouble spots. Those cuts become trouble spots because you have details that your installer has to install and those details are the toughest spots. So they're gonna be the toughest to close up. And even if they do close up and they last a warranty 10 or 15 years, they're gonna be the first ones to get out when the roof fails. So we'll look at some overhead views here of what I mean um, with less complicated verse more complicated roofs. So a less complicated one would be like a hip and ridge roof that you see here, like a square or rectangular shaped roof. More complicated might have uh, like L shape or zigzaggy type shapes where you have cuts all over with returns, valleys, and we'll get into what a return is, what a valley is in different videos. But just know that the more cut up and uh, like customize your house is, is also going to mean that you're probably going to have more trouble in the future with roofing issues. So to sum everything up, we know everybody likes their custom crazy cut-up houses because they look cool, but at the end of the day, less is more.